this is the new 7 years war cannon mold. It is more complicated than previous cannon molds as it has 4 barrels in it plus cannonballs. There is quite a few parts to cast and assemble. In this video we are going to explain to you how the mold works and how to get it to fill properly. Here we have the cannon wheel and it is always complicated as the rim here will block the air from escaping. To fix that we have drilled some ventilation holes to the outside. Also up here near the axle there are two ventilation holes. When the metal goes into the mould the talcum powder helps the air to escape out the side but where you have ventilation holes the air will escape through those holes. Add talcum powder to both sides all the way to the edges with a cotton ball. Talcum allows the air to escape by adding a tiny separation between both mould halves. It also protects the rubber. Make sure your mould is dry before starting as dampness prematurely cools the metal and it will result in a reduction in detail in the casting. Clap mole halves together to get rid of any loose powder as it could block small channels. PTFE rods are high technology plastic that is heat resistant. Used in, uh, in the mold to create the hole for the cannon wheel so that we can fit the axle into it. Put it into the hole in the centre of the wheel and when closing the mold make sure it fits into the hole on the other side. Make sure the rough side of the support boards are against the mould to allow air to escape. If you use the smooth side it will block air vents drilled through the mould. The function of the clamp is to hold the mould together and it is also flexible enough to allow air to escape. To cast the cannon we recommend high quality metal and we supply model metal. Use our wooden metal stirrer stick or the end of a long match to test the temperature of the metal. If light smoke arises after putting it in the metal for 5 to 10 seconds then the metal is ready to cast. If there is no smoke the metal is still not hot enough. Most domestic cookers will heat the metal to 300 or 320 celsius but you need to leave the metal on for at least 5 to 10 minutes before casting. Scrape away from the side you are planning on pouring from any slag or scum so that this will not end up in your mould. Rest the ladle on the mould, then when pouring it into the mould, tap it firmly with something solid. This helps remove air blockages and improves the casting results. You can pour the second one afterwards. Give a little time be between each pour. If a small leak of metal occurs, don't panic. Just leave it cool and remove it and remelt it. The leak comes from a support channel near the edge of the mould that takes the overflow from the in gate. After 3 to 5 minutes tap the metal to see if it is ready to open. Remove the clamps and carefully open the mould. Any leaked metal can be removed and remelted at this stage. You can see that our first attempt has an incomplete casting for the wheel. There is an airlock for one of the spokes but otherwise it came out quite well. The axle casted perfectly. The carriage has also casted perfectly. We will redo the casting for the wheel again. We have recast the cannon wheel again. So we can disassemble the mould and carefully open it. Remove the rod and keep it safe for future use. The wheel came out perfectly this time. Now use our super snipper to cut away the axle from the ingate and then remove the wheel from the ingate. Next we cut away the excess metal from the gun carriage. All the excess metal can be remelted. The axle fits underneath this. Use gel super glue to fix the axle to the carriage properly.
Now cut the barrels off their ingates. You can use a metal file to clean up any rough edges left over from cutting. When you have all the cannon parts cast and cleaned, you can begin to assemble them. They should fit together fairly easily. You can glue them together and select your preferred barrel that you want for that cannon. At that stage, then you can prepare to prime them and paint them. Thank you.